BioBalance HealthCast, episode 180, Bioidentical Hormone Therapy FAQ. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy and I are going to spend some time answering questions that have come in from viewers uh, via either her website, drkathymoppin.com or biobalancehealth.com, or through Facebook. And that website is facebook.com slash drkathymoppin. So if you have a desire to get in touch with us as, resp- as a reaction to something you see on one of these podcasts, there are multiple ways that you can do that. And we do value those questions or comments or contributions. And periodically we take uh, a podcast to dedicate to respond to uh, things that have come in. So we're going to do that today. And our first question comes uh, from a watcher named Gail. And Gail sent in a question to Kathy uh, that is specifically Gail's question, but also gives us an opportunity to, to respond more globally mm-hmm. about the concern that Gail has. So, Kathy, would you? Uh, Gail wanted to know, she said that she's been doing pellets for a while, and the last two insertions, she states, were not be- very beneficial. Uh-huh. So I I actually get this question many, multiple times, especially in patients that I've had have a lot of or been with me a long time. They're like, you know, I don't know if they're really doing anything anymore. That's anymore, right. so. and so generally we sit we sit down have a consultation, and and it's amazing when I go over the symptoms that a patient had that particular patient had in the very beginning before treatment, and say, well, do you have, do you still have a lack of libido? Well, no. Do you still have trouble with your mood? Are you still up and down and moody? Because I have all this written down. Are you are you still experiencing that? Well, no. Do you still have migraines? Do you still have migraines? Oh, I forgot I had migraines. Yeah. You know, and, and so it kind of goes like that. So my answer to Gail is either go through the symptoms, if you can remember them, that you had in the beginning and see if they are still there. And if they're not, then the pellets are doing their job. What doesn't happen with pellets is they don't, like, give you a high. You're not going to keep getting, like, more and more and more energy after the first... It's not like taking it's, uppers. No, it's it's not, it's not, it's not a drug like that. Yeah. It is a hormone replacement. Mm-hmm. So you will feel younger and better, but every year you take it, you don't feel even younger. It, it's that you feel great and or good. So now, if you were a cantankerous curmudgeon when you were 35, you're still going to be one at 55. Well, that's true. You yeah. are. Yeah. You are. And that's not something that, that pellets fix. Right. But pellets do fix uh, this host of symptoms that come with loss of testosterone and loss of estrogen with menopause. So I guess I, ask, I would ask Gail to... Look at those symptoms or sit down with me and go over all the symptoms if she can't remember them and decide whether this is still worth it. And lastly, one of the things that sometimes people have to do is to not get the pellets for a few months past their due due date. Like if they were supposed to get them in four months, then wait two more months and then watch all the symptoms come flooding back. That impresses upon my patients how much they really do need them because as human beings, we get used to a certain status quo, and then we're like, I don't know what it's doing. Right. Well, it's very much like uh, physiologically, we have a a phenomenon called sensory adaptation. Mm -hmm. And your sensors, they're hot, cold, pain, and touch sensors in your skin Mm -hmm. that regulate your information about how you're doing. And and actually, I used to, when I was teaching psychology, would do an experiment and have kids put one hand in a pan of warm water and one hand in a pan of cold water. We did that at camp, and, and but that was while they were sleeping. <laughs> they'd feel hot or cold, but if they leave their hands in the water for a while, they reset to zero. Their sensors reset to zero, mm-hmm. so it feels normal. Mm-hmm. Then if you take those hands out and put them in the other thing, mm-hmm. you get a, a massive Shocked. reaction. Right. So what's happening here is a kind of sensory adaptation. She has adjusted to the pellets that she's received to the point she's not now aware of how bad she was feeling. And I'm, she, I'm assuming that I haven't that looked is the at assumption. Looked, right. And that before may not be we did case. this, I didn't look at but it is, her chart. It is a phenomenon that you encounter that yes. people talk to you about. And so one option is to say, well, go off the pellets and see if your symptomology that brought you here in the mm-hmm. first place returns. The the qualifier to that would be that people sometimes don't make those connections. 
Like they'll come mm-hmm. in and say to you, well, the pellets aren't doing anything, but I've lost five pounds. And I've mm-hmm. lost five pounds because I found this new protein drink. That's right. You know, and, and so that's, right. that's the answer mm-hmm. to my prayer. So I don't right. need pellets anymore. I'm just going to drink the protein. Or I chip. went, or I got, I had the pellets, and I feel really good because I went to this chiropractor, and he's adjusting me now. That's right. And I'm like, and that's mm, the answer. Wait a second. <laughs> so, so you have aware. to actually think yeah. about it. Yeah. So I hope that helps. And and then our second question uh, is a question from uh, Larry, and he's writing about he and his wife, uh, and let's see, do we? They're they're from they're from San Diego. They're from San Diego. And uh, says his wife has been taking an oral spray homeopathic uh, human growth hormone for over 15 years, which it's is just, not something that you do. But as a result I of that, she looks, hormone, but I do she a spray fabulous, that has amino acids in it that does right. stimulate growth hormone. Mm-hmm. But that isn't growth hormone, and they're not taking it either. Right. They're, they're taking a, um, a homeopathic means over the counter, very low dose uh, health food store type of stimulation for growth hormone. Right. So Larry says, uh, we've read your book. It's really good. We suffer from all the symptoms that are in the book, even though you know, he says his wife looks really good. She's mm-hmm. starting to feel a lot of these things or has felt them. And, and she's 78 and he's 68. And he says they still have an active sex life but would like to uh, be able to maintain that. Mm-hmm. And wants to know, they live in uh, San Diego, California. Want to know is there a way that they can get pellets to mm-hmm. maintain and and. Uh, to alleviate those symptoms. And, and it's, you, you have an answer for that. Yeah, I do. Uh, it's very fortunate that um, I have trained an affiliate mm-hmm. in Pasadena. Now, that's not that's not the end of the world. I mean, that's not that far. From San Diego. Even though California is a huge state, that's not that far from uh, California, especially you don't have to really get on a plane to get there. And, I, I mean, you can just drive up. And Jen treats both men and women, and her name is Jen Park at PasadenaPellets.com. Mm-hmm. And she is uh, in, she's in Pasadena. She does what I do. She does exactly the same process. She looks at the same labs. And since I trained her, I know that you will get excellent care. She does treat men as well. So I'm hoping that um, Larry and his wife get to... Uh, to Jen for treatment, and she'll also evaluate you to make sure that you that of course you it's need this right. and that it's appropriate. But having listened to what your issues are, it sounds like you're much younger than your years, and that you deserve to feel really good and Absolutely. have a long health span because you have a long lifespan. Well, and, and it's exciting to hear someone who is doing what we talk about, which is maximizing their opportunity for positive aging. You know, to, to live an active, healthy life as long as you possibly can is the goal. That's right. And so it's very important that you follow up on this. Actually, Kathy and I were just out in Pasadena to visit with Dr. Park and do a book signing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're very conversant with our practice and what she's doing. And yeah, we had a great turnout. We had 100 people come in and listen to us. And we signed books for everybody. And her staff is amazing. And right. Dr. Jick is her partner. And he, he was very gracious. Yeah. And he set everything up for us. So we're thankful for that. And I think you would enjoy their office. So get in touch with him. Yeah. So then the next one is just a comment, actually, from Denise. It says, I have just finished reading your book. I'm so excited to find out there's hope for a better life. And... That's exactly what my goal was. Uh-huh. One of my multiple goals in writing the book was so that women wouldn't be hopeless, that they wouldn't give up on feeling well after 40 because half their life is in front of them. And that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside because she has hope now that she can get treatment and get better. And this last one I'm actually going to read. It's from a physician in Vancouver, British Columbia. It says, Dear Dr. Moffat, I'm a family physician in Vancouver, British Columbia. I discovered your book this morning via my Hay House newsletter. Hay House is our publisher that that put out our book, The Secret Female Hormone. Uh, I sat the entire day reading the wealth of information imparted with eyes wide open and constant gasps of, oh, my God. (laughs) I've not only focused many of my friends on Facebook to read the uh, forced many of my friends on Facebook to read the book, but I have forced them to make an appointment with their doctors and to hopefully have other doctors become inspired by your book as I am. My next question to you is, how do I learn to administer the pellets to my own patients? Do you provide courses for other doctors? So I'd like for you to speak to that because that's not the only physician that's contacted you with the same response. No, no, I've had I've had many physicians ask me, how, how do I learn this? And it's very important. 
it's ve- first of all, it's very important to know that this is not just about putting pellets in or giving somebody a shot at testosterone and saying, see ya. It's a very complicated pr- process to both choose and decide which patients will respond because you don't want to frustrate someone and 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 have your patient not respond. So well, you have to choose them by looking at their lab tests and their history. And that's one of the primary differences between you and other mass market testosterone companies. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are companies that flash open, do nationwide marketing, charge an upfront fee of three to five thousand dollars to with become them for one of their patients. And it's a one size fits all response to, you know, oh here you take the magic pill. This mm-hmm. is not what you do is not magic. It's but first medicine. they do the bi- they do a wallet biopsy. A wallet biopsy. <laughs> and first that you meet with someone who takes your money before you're even looked at, which I can't, I don't find Not, to be they take your a money good way to do three this. to five thousand dollars of money. Right, right, and that's about twice or more than anything you would ever receive or, or get billed for it in an office that does pellets individually. Right. So the and and upfront is is the problem too. Mm-hmm. However, I I actually to get back to the doctors that have been uh, reaching me. We um, have always wanted to do an affiliate program on a larger scale than just taking care of one doctor at a time, doing small groups of doctors and and doing training here in St. Louis. And we are planning on doing training at the end of July this year. From then on, we won't do it in the summer in St. Louis because it's not like, but this, but we have had so much, so much, um, so many requests, mm-hmm. so much interest that we are going to do this in, in uh, July, and we are setting it up so that doctors who are really interested in making this, eventually working this into their primary practice or starting to work it into a family practice or a primary care or, or a GYN practice, can actually come here, be trained both in the medicine of it, uh, the practice of it, and the and actually the business running the business because if you can't run the business then you're not going to be able to do this very long. Stay in practice, right? That's right. You're not you're you're going to be at a loss and then you're going to say forget it because you can't support yourself. So basically, we'll train you to do everything that you need to do to actually build your practice and have patients come in and be as happy as our patients. And so we we're really excited to hear from Natasha because she's a physician who's read the book and knows about what we do. And if you are also a physician who who's aware of our book or, and or our podcast and you would be interested uh, you can go to the drkathymoppin.com or the secretfemalehormone.com, and there's a link to an affiliate page, uh, which will give you some of the information about the training program that Kathy's talking about. But the other reason that we're taking time on this podcast to respond is for, for those of you who are not physicians, but who become aware uh, through your own searches of the kind of work that Kathy does and the way that she helps people, is you can talk to your physician about it. And you can give them this information, and they can contact us if they want more information about being trained to do pellets. That's right. And we'd love to have an entire um, speckling of doctors all over the United States so everybody could have access access, to Local access to quality care. And and let me emphasize again, the differential is... (laughs) good medical practice with a relationship between the physician and the doctor who knows you and spends time with you and who qualifies you as a patient. Will this really be beneficial? One of the things that I've learned about Kathy's practice and really respect is that she turns people away and says, you're not a good candidate for this at this point in time. You have these other uh, issues that need to be ameliorated before this would be a thing that we would consider. So she's just not holding out her wallet and saying, put it in here. Uh, there are mass market companies that do that. That is not what Kathy does, and it's not what she trains other doctors mm-hmm. to do. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's really true. It, it's, a, it's, it's so very important to have the right um, goal in mind when you're getting into this. Business is just a side effect. You have to do the business to actually stay afloat. But, but this is something that the doctors, I mean, doctors come in and go, that's so cool. They sit in and watch me talk to my patients and patients come in and say, I'm better. I mean, I'm like, I'm like really better. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't hear that very often in a regular medical practice. So it has a really, it has a really gratifying effect on physicians who really want patients to be better. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a model of, of medical care that many of them thought they were going to find when they went into med school and mm-hmm. didn't find. That's right. It's not corporate care. Yeah. It's it's individualized medicine. Okay. 
So okay. an additional question that came in from Laura. Uh, Laura has had several children and is now 51. And she says that for the last 10 years, she doesn't feel like the doctors or nurses that she goes to even listen to her or understand her. That she, she has can't. the primary problem of having migraines. Uh -huh. And she's been given a medicine and called Imitrex and earaches. And so she's, I, think, she, I believe she's had her ear checked and they didn't find anything that was surgically repairable. Mm -hmm. But the migraines are really one of the things that may have a lot to do with the ear pain as well. And she's not had adequate treatment or prevention of her migraines. And this has been in the right time frame that for her, I believe that testosterone in pellet form only, because it doesn't appear that testosterone in other forms help migraines. And testosterone has to be under the skin. It has to be not in a gel or a cream or sublingual or vag tab. It has to be pellets because it gives you an a, basically a plateau of testosterone level doesn't start dropping till right before the next pellet insertion so it doesn't go up and down every day it doesn't go up and down every month mm -hmm. so that up and down is what triggers migraines so it, it is actually a, a stable kind of a level so that's what she needs for her migraines and you know I have a lot of referrals from neurologists here that get to the point where they've done everything that they can do and then they say, hmm, you're in the right age group. Why don't you go see Kathy and see if we can get your testosterone back in order? Well, that, that's been an interesting thing to watch in your practice grow over the years <laughs> is other doctors who initially were skeptical who said, nah, I don't see the connection for that and this is my area and so you don't know what you're talking about, who have learned to, to take the cases they can't resolve and send them to you to see if you can help. And in a, especially migraines, uh, neurologists mm -hmm. have been sending you migraine referrals. And in a significant number of those, you can help. Not all of yeah, them. Not I all. Mean, some are but we can usually am ameliorate them. I mean, if we can't get rid of them completely, we can, them. we can modulate them so that they're less often, less frequent. They don't interrupt somebody's life as much. Mm -hmm. So that that's gratifying because I had migraines before my pellets. And... They were getting worse and worse and worse with age. And I only they started when I was 38, like out of the blue. And that's when my testosterone was was decreasing because I was on Lupron, which shut it down. But that's when it began to get bad. And they just got worse and worse and even worse after my hysterectomy, which I did not expect. Because everybody says, oh, they're from estrogen. Yes. But with even without estrogen, they were much worse. But ever since I had testosterone pellets, I haven't had a migraine. So that's 13 years. Wow. And that's amazing. And for migraine sufferers, that's good news. That's and huge that's awesome. because that impaired my life. Yeah. There's a lot of things that impaired my life, but without testosterone. But that was one of them. Okay. So we've taken the time today to try to respond specifically, uh, e even though we answer individually these questions uh, back through Facebook or emails, we think they are representative of the kinds of concerns that people have globally when they become aware of our website and want to communicate with us. So we would encourage you to do that. If you have comments, if you have questions, uh, if, there, if, if you just want a referral to a physician, uh, the standard referral that we would give, if, if you're not in a catchment area for a doctor that Kathy has a relationship with as an affiliate who's trained and, and knows the methodology that she uses, uh, the next best thing is to go to the AMMG website uh, and look for a doctor in your area who's a member of that organization. It's an age management medical group, and they're all through, they're all, all throughout the world. They actually have a worldwide group of physicians and 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 hundreds of thousands of doctors who do this. So yeah, because it, since the internet is universal, we get questions from people in England, we get mm -hmm. questions from people in Germany and the Netherlands, mm -hmm. who become aware of our podcast or our book and mm -hmm. say, well, how can I find this? And the AMMG is the answer. And actually, Kathy's been asked to give a presentation to the AMMG conference in Orlando, Florida at the end of this month. And so she's going to go down there and talk to, and, and it, it's an organization of tens of thousands of doctors. She's going to give a talk about what she does in terms of testosterone through pellets. Yep, for women. So For so women this time. For women this time, yeah. <laughs> Although she also does men. Uh, <laughs> treatment. <laughs> so thank you for watching uh, Bob Balance HealthCast and please come back again next time. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963.
You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.